Okay, sorry. I'll start over. Um, so today is Friday, May 29th. Sorry, I didn't start recording earlier. I kind of got taken away by uh, introducing the module and, and, and talking about school and, and other things that are happening. But uh, for those of you that aren't uh, here in class today, as always, you can watch this video as soon as I finish. I'll post the YouTube link. Um, but we're on the last module. The last module is going to cover three chapters and the module itself, I'll go back at the end and show you Schoology again so I can show you what is going to be the, the end result. But let's go ahead and just start talking about ecology. Um, as you can see here, this module, I lumped it all on one slide, one PowerPoint slide, and it covers three chapters. So the first chapter, 13, is called the principles of ecology, which is going to be just an intro to the concepts we need to know about. 14 is very specific. 14 has to do with kind of like the feedback loops, like the relationships that occur within ecology. And then 15 is, is, is basically all about the biomes that make up the biosphere. And biosphere is just a, a, a fancy word that we use in biology that just means just means earth okay so um i'm gonna go real slow and these three chapters although in the book it's a lot i've really really cut it down i just want to teach you all you need to know for your project okay so any questions for me so far and thank you uh for being patient with me i wasn't recording but i am recording now so any questions for me now guys about the three chapters well i have a sip of my coffee You guys ready? Yep. Think so. All right, here we go. So let's start with chapter 13. So 13, like I said, is just kind of like the intro stuff. Um, so really this is just gonna be a lot of a lot of pictures to show you, you know, like things like food chains, food webs, etc. Um, and as always, I put my words in red that are gonna be the ones on the quiz. Okay, so let's start with section 13.1, which is about, you know like kind of the gist of what ecology is all about. So hopefully nothing too foreign. Uh, can you read us the slide, Vanessa? What is ecology? Ecology is the scientific study of interactions between organisms and their environments, focusing on energy transfer. Yeah, so it has to do not just with like the, the, the things in the environment. So for example, like my, my, my Krusty the Clown doll, which I keep next to my desk. <laughs> um, it's not just studying living things like my crusty and my homer okay because an environment is not just living things an environment has to do with the 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 non-living things that are part of that environment as well so for example if my crusty doll lives here in in, in my office uh, i would want to study well what does this crusty doll sleep on what does this crusty doll eat? How often does it eat it? What are its resources? Um, who is his competition? Who are his mates? Uh, are there parasites that feed off him? That's what ecology is all about. So it's not just studying one organism, it's studying organisms and their interactions, and more importantly, energy transfer. And by energy transfer, I mean like, what does crusty eat? Who eats crusty? Okay, that's what we mean by energy transfer. Okay, um, so it's a, it's a science of relationships, guys. Okay, so in ecology, um, this pyramid I do want you to kind of commit to memory because this pyramid really is the starting point of ecology. All right. So you'll notice on this pyramid there are six levels. Can you read us the six levels from the top down, Felipe? starting from the little ladybug all the way down. All right, top is organism. After that will be population. Will be after that community, after that ecosystem, after that biome, and after that is biosphere. Okay, so just by looking at this pyramid, Felipe, what, what can you infer about like the sizes of the sections of this pyramid? Do you notice that they're not all the same slices like the, they're different they're different right what can you what, what do you think that's trying to tell you Felipe? like well 
If you look at the tribes, like, they're all different, right? Yeah. Like the size of them. What do you think that's trying to tell you? How much they take up? Well, no. Okay. Well, yeah. Okay. Well, because, okay, well, a biosphere would be all, everything, right? Exactly. And after that would be a biome, which would be the terrain. And after that would be ecosystem inside the biome. And it would be the community inside the ecosystem and population. And then, more or less. Then, more or less, Felipe. Let me, let me just kind of sum up what, what you said, okay? It goes like this. With organism, how many ladybugs do you see? I see... One. Just one, right? So check it out. Fortunately, I have lots of Simpson toys, so I can do this, okay? An organism literally is just one species, like one individual belonging to the species. That's an organism. Population. What do you see in populations, Melissa? What do you see in populations? Multiple ladybugs. Multiple ladybugs, right? So check it out. You guys are going to laugh at how many Homer Simpson toys I have. I have a lot. A whole collection. Remember this one? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, there's more. That's better, Kathy. Look at this. <laughs> Hold on, there's more. Trust, trust me, Felipe has a bigger collection of like the bobbleheads, I think. Oh, what? Bobbleheads or like pop toys? Pops. Oh, yeah. Oh, dude, wait till I show you my pop toys. I have a ton. You okay, probably so have a lot. Yeah, I have I'm a very quick fair ones. Okay, so check it out. So this, Melissa, would be a population. So let me put these down. So a, a population is multiple individuals of the same species living together, okay? What about community? What's different about a community? Uh, how about Jaime? What looks different to you about a community? Um, there's um, there's um, um, two different populations. Exactly, exactly, right? So we have, for example, we have our, our Homer Simpsons. And let me just grab one of my pop toys then. Hold up, let me see. Here we go. Jesus Christ. <laughs> so you take them out of the box. No, well, not all of them. Not all of them. Not all of them. This one, this one I couldn't resist. You know who this is, right? Uh, Pierre right. from where? From where? Toy Story. Toy Story, yeah. So this would be a population, right? So if I, here, now let me show you some of my other pop toys. I didn't open this one. What's this on? Oh, oh, the Demogorgon. Yeah, Demogorgon. Yeah, Demogorgon. So, so this would be a population, right? Because it can't just be it can't just be one pop toy and one Homer, because a population is again a lot of members of the same species, right? So, so a community would be if I had a bunch of pop toys and a bunch of Homer Simpsons all living in the same area. That's a community. Does that make sense, guys? Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. Pretty, pretty easy. Right? Okay, cool. Um, now let's look at ecosystem. What do you think, just based on that on that picture then, Alexa, what do you think an ecosystem is? Um, there's like a river right, right here. So the ecosystem is this picture right here. Sorry, it's not so clear. This is the ecosystem picture. It, it's this thing right here. Let me... There's, so they're like plants, animals, and like the river? Exactly. So, so you said something really important there, Alexa. You said it's it's plants, animals, and the river. Is a river is a river a living thing? No. Alexa, is a river a living thing? No. It's not, it's not right. An ecosystem, guys, has to do not just with the living things in the area, but also the non-living things. So, in this picture, like Alexa said. We have the plants, we have the birds, we have the fish, but we also have the water. What else is in this picture that's not living? What else is in this picture that's not living, Alexa? I know it's not a great picture, but... Yeah, I, um, I think there's like clouds in the air. Yeah, there's clouds, right? There's clouds, so then we have to assume also that there's an atmosphere, right? We have to assume that there's water vapor, which makes up those clouds. We have to assume there's moisture. We have to assume there's temperature to make clouds rise and form in the first place, right? So we'll get into it, but for now, yes, you're absolutely right. An ecosystem, Alexa, is living and non-living things. Okay, this 
picture of this desert here would be a biome. So based on that picture, based on this picture, Melissa, what do you think a biome is? Alyssa. Would it be like the habitat? It, it, okay, so you're right. Or like, but, but go ahead, go ahead. I don't know, like an example would be like the desert or exactly. something like that, or like the rainforest. Exactly, so exactly. You just named two biomes, Melissa, but, but what makes them different than one another? Let's get into that first. Why is a desert different than a rainforest? Because of like the climate or something like that? Bingo. So a biome, guys, has to do with not just the water, not just the animals, not just the atmosphere, not just the ladybug, but it includes the climate and the weather. Okay, so when you think of a desert, doesn't matter if you're thinking of the Mojave Desert, doesn't matter if you're thinking about the Sahara Desert, they're both deserts, meaning they share factors that are the same in all deserts right so deserts what do we know about them they're they're hot they don't get a lot of rain they have a lot of the same types of plants and shrubs a lot of the same types of animals so you're absolutely right most it has to do with, with the climate and the habitat and then lastly is the biosphere so Jaime what do you think the biosphere is then um the air it's the earth itself exactly oh. so, the, so the biosphere is all of the biomes that's what the biosphere is okay cool so um in my next slides i don't need to show you this now they're just the definitions you can look at those on your own but like we just said a species is one living thing a population is a group of species a community like we said is multiple populations living together an ecosystem, like Alexa pointed out, is not just the living things, but also the non-living things, right? So in this picture, Alexa, that I'm showing you of this coral reef, what would some of the living things uh, be in this picture, Alexa? Um, kind of like the fish and also like the plant in there also. Yeah, yeah, so, so in case you're not familiar guys with what a coral reef is, um, generally, coral reefs are like skeletons of, of, of like polyps, meaning it's not a living thing. But there are living things in a coral reef. There are, there are plants, there are animals, there are starfish, there are anemones. So it's a little bit of both. There are living things, but there's also non-living things. Alexa, what would be some non-living things in this ecosystem? So like the water? The water. Yeah, the water, right? Okay, so that's an ecosystem. The biome, like Melissa told us, has to do with the climate itself. So um, this is a color-coded picture of the different biomes that we're going to look at, which you're going to use for your project, and I'll explain more about that later. And then lastly, like Jaime said, the biosphere is just Earth. That's, that's, that's the Earth, okay? Um, all right, so what's the difference then between living and non-living things? Why are we separating these two. Can you read us this slide, please, Jaime? All right, uh, the environment is made up of two factors, biotic fa uh, factors, all living organisms um, inhabiting the earth and abiotic factors, non-living parts of the environment, um, like um, temperature, soil, light, moisture, air currents, etc. Okay, so in this picture, oh, I went too far. Okay, so in this picture, Jaime, what would the biotic factors be in this in this picture? Um, the bears, the deer, the squirrels, basically the animals. Is that is that all? Oh, and um, and the uh, the trees as well, right? And the trees, exactly. So, what would the abiotic factors be then, Felipe? What would the abiotic factors be in this picture? So that would be like the dirt. Uh. The light coming in, I guess. Yeah. You know, oxygen, et cetera. Yeah, the oxygen. Yeah, exactly. Okay, good. So just simple vocabulary, all right? We call, in ecology, we call living things biotic factors. Non-living things we call abiotic factors. Now let's talk about the energy, OK? 
okay? So when we're talking about ecology, like I said, we're not just studying animals and plants. We want to know about the relationships, like where does that animal get its food source from? Who is the ultimate source of all the food to begin with? So in terms of energy, we break it down into two parts. The first part are what we call the producers. The producers are things we call autotrophs. Auto just means self, okay? Troph means to eat. So producers are things that make their own food, basically. And that would include things that we're very familiar with, such as plants, right? Plants make their own food. So does algae. Algae, which you probably see at the surface of a pool, sometimes the surface of, of some ponds, um, is a photosynthetic. And now that we've talked about photosynthesis last semester, there are photosynthetic organisms that do not need to eat. Plants do not need to eat. What they do is they photosynthesize, right? They have structures uh, that we call chloroplasts, which we learned about last semester. And using the pigment in chloroplast called chlorophyll, they take that light energy to make something very, very important for us, which we eat, which we call sugar, which can be found in many forms, right? It can be a pineapple, it can be an apple, it can be a vegetable, it doesn't matter. But producers are essentially like the foundation of any ecosystem, even in a desert. Even in a desert. I know there's not a lot of plants in deserts, but the things that eat those plants, which are, you know, your rodents, some birds, uh, insects, if those plants weren't there, those insects and those birds and those rodents would be dead. And if they're dead, the things that eat them would be dead, et cetera, et cetera. So we're going to get into food change and food webs very soon, but um, that's called a producer. Um, and this is algae. If you've never, if you've never dipped your hand into the surface of a of a, of a still like pond, um, all right. Consumer, the more interesting ones, and you're probably not familiar with all of these. So let's go ahead and let um, let's see who else we have here. Oh, Thanos, can you read us, please? What are the six different types of consumers? Thomas, you got a mic? Oh, okay. All right. So how about uh, Daisy? Can you read us, please? What are the consumers? Must eat photo, 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 or photo, 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 to obtain their energy. Six different types. Carnivores, herbivores, omnivores, scavengers, decomposers, and detritivores. Yeah. Let me, let, me, let me explain something that maybe I didn't cover so well. Um, a photo autotroph, guys, is a plant that makes its own energy using sun. When you think of photo, please just think of light, okay? So all of your standard plants, okay, those are all photo autotrophs, okay? Auto just means self, meaning they make their own energy. Trough just means, just means food. So this autotroph just means they make their own food, okay? But when you put the word photo, which means light, or in this case, the sun, this is telling us photo autotrophs are basically plants that photosynthesize using the sun. That's very different than something like a chemotroph. A chemotroph, which there's very few on this planet, and they're all named the same thing. They're called archaea bacteria. These are the types of bacteria that you'll find in places where there is no sunlight. So for example, deep thermal vents, like underwater volcano vents, or just volcanoes themselves, or very salty bodies of water. Um, those are, or even the bacteria that lives inside your stomach. So those are very different. Those are what we call chemotrophs because they do not photosynthesize. They make their own energy, but they use the chemicals around them. Okay, so that, that, that's, that's the two different kinds of producers. Like Daisy just said, a consumer is something that eats phototrophs 
or other heterotrophs like itself, okay? So let's get into what the six different types of heterotrophs are. Hetero just means like different, okay? So like heterosexual means like different sex. So a heterotroph is something that, that cannot make its own food. It has to eat something different than itself. Does, does that make sense, guys? What a, what a autotroph is versus a heterotroph. Does that make sense? Yep. What's the difference? Yeah. What's the difference? Someone tell me. What's the difference between a heterotroph and an autotroph? Someone tell me. Uh, okay. um, I want to say that producers, they, um, they make their own food. Um, while consumers basically they they feed off the um like um producers like all all other um all other living things yeah exactly so um but there are six different types so now let's get into what those are all right so the first one you're obviously very familiar with that's a carnivore right uh yeah. carnivores are things that basically eat other living animals right they have to eat them. so cats snakes killer whales these are exclusively carnivores there is no there is no vegetarian cat <laughs> okay there's no vegetarian snake all right um, all these things have to eat other heterotrophs that's a true carnivore are humans true carnivores no no we're not we're not in fact you get very sick uh, and one of the root causes of some types of stomach and colon cancer is eating too much meat and even pancreatic cancer is eating too much meat and you guys may remember when we did cancer projects some people did their project on pancreatic cancer so no we are not carnivores. all right next is herbivores herbivores you're also familiar with right these are things that eat plants all right so koalas koalas are exclusively herbivores um cows you're familiar with have four stomachs that's all they eat that's all they can eat and actually fun fact they don't they don't technically break down the grasses that they eat they have bacteria that live inside of their four stomachs which break down those grasses for them and give them the nutrients so they're actually fed by bacteria not from the grass they eat uh koalas anyone know a fun fact about koalas they're slow. Are they dangerous? What? Do you know what koalas eat? Do you know what this? Yeah, just leaves. The aka. <laughs> the aka. It's not just any leaf. Oh. Uh, aka. Holy. They 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 eat they eat a type of tree called the eucalyptus tree, uh. and and the leaves of the. Give them their water. Tree, well, it's not just that. It's the, the eucalyptus plant actually has cyanide in it. It's, it's poison. These plants are poison. Yeah, but koalas, because, you know, going back to evolution, going back to speciation, um, remember, Australia is an island, and these animals evolved on that island to, you know, be experts and survivalists of their environment. There's not a lot of good vegetation in that part of the world where they live. And so they evolved to be able to eat those plants. And they have some hardcore bacteria that live inside of their stomach. In fact, koalas have one of the longest large intestines in the world. And it's not because they eat a lot. It's because they have to have so much bacteria in their stomach to be able to break down that poison so that they don't die. So herbivores, and especially this herbivore, which lives on, a, on an island, evolved something that is fascinating that is not found on any other animal. And that's the ability to be able to eat poisonous plants and not die. So that's herbivore, all right? Um, next, this is us. We're omnivores, right? And the reason we're omnivores is because we can eat photo autotrophs, we can eat plants, and of course, we can also eat other animals, right? Um, so a perfect example of that is us, and of course, your dogs. Your dogs are not, dogs are not true carnivores, right? Wolves are, but dogs are not. We've trained dogs to eat, you know, 
the foods that we give. So dogs are omnivores just like us. Um, next is scavengers. Scavengers are unique. A scavenger, um, well, first of all, humans are not scavengers. Okay? The reason is because scavengers, what they eat are dead organisms. Yeah, dead bodies. But there's a special name for that. I mean, we call it carrion. And carrion is, you know, meat that's quote unquote gone bad. Meaning these animals um, have fungus, parasites, bacteria. But scavengers, true scavengers, actually can, can eat that meat and not get sick. Those would be things like vultures, coyotes, hyenas, all right? Those are true scavengers. Humans are not scavengers. You eat old meat, you get sick. You can even die, right? So we are not scavengers. Uh, lastly are the decomposers. Decomposers are things uh, that break down all the other living things. So they break down the heterotrophs. They break down the photoautotrophs, right? Meaning they are the bacteria that is breaking down the spinach. They are the fungus that's breaking down this little orange here, okay? So those are the producers and the consumers. Any questions about those guys? Because I've been saying a lot. Any questions about those? Um, I have a question. Yeah. Are bacteria like technically parasites since they like live inside stomachs like survive? Mm, well, as as a group, we can't say that, Vanessa, and that's because, like I said, there are some bacteria that don't actually eat anything. They live off of chemicals, and so uh, when I introduced the word, um, where was it, chemoautotroph, so there are actually some bacteria like this bacteria called an archaea bacteria that they don't feed on anything at all. They actually just live off of gases around them. So like the types of bacteria that live in volcanoes, for example, they don't eat food. They don't parasite or, or scavenge off of anything. They literally ingest sulfuric acid from vents and sulfur is an element on the periodic table. And that element is what they use to power and feed themselves. So no, technically we can't say that bacteria are, are parasites in that sense because there's 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 so many bac different bacteria, but um, and they're not parasites either. Does anyone know like what the definition of a parasite is? Uh, something that leeches off a living organism while harming it. True. But the but the the thing you forgot to include, Felipe, is that they don't kill their host. Well, they just, yeah, they just they just they just they just feed off of something. So that's why bacteria are not parasites, uh, technically, is because they usually come in when something is is dead, right, or dying. So that's why they wouldn't be considered a parasite. But good question, good question. Um, the last one on this list, and this is where I'm going to pause because I've been talking far too long. The last one is called a detritivore. Now, the reason I'm introducing these to you guys is because when you choose your biome, your job is going to be to include one of each of these into your biome. So a detritivore, guys, is something that feeds on what we call detritus. That's Latin for garbage because detritivores are things that eat inorganic things, meaning they eat, they eat poop, they eat mucus, they eat, I forgot to include, they, they eat soil. Um, and that's gonna be things like slugs, things like worms. You have some, uh, you, guys, you guys know what dung beetles are, right? No. You guys, dung beetles, you never seen them? Well, dung beetles are a type of beetle that harvest uh, manure, basically, they, they, and they get their nutrients by eating what's inside of poop, because there is nutrients in poop. That's why we use feces to grow, I mean, manure to grow plants, because there is, there is nitrogen in there, that, that some animals use that as a food source. So a detritivore is something that eats what is not considered like a living thing, basically, right? So they're going to eat things like, like particles, rocks, um, soil, 
poop, uh, dead skin. So it's usually, you know, what we call like bottom feeders, you know, like bottom feeder fish. You guys know what those are, right? Those little sucker fish that stick to the sides of fish tanks. Those would be considered, you guys know what I'm talking about, right? No, I'm just scared. Okay, well, we'll, we'll look at them later, but things like snails, crabs are considered detritivores. Uh, some crabs, all they do is basically they eat like fish scales and that's not a living thing. So technically, um, we would call them detritivores, all right? So those are going to be your different types of consumers versus producers. I'm going to pause right there because when we meet on Monday, I'm going to show you a video on the, the, the loops, the, those, you know, um, what we call food chains and food webs. Like one thing, one thing, another thing, another thing. So I'm going to pause there. What other questions do you guys have for me so far? So we've covered a lot, but that's basically the whole chapter. See how quickly I did that? Because ecology, you guys are probably already familiar with it anyway because you're exposed to it. So this module, like I said, it, I'm going to make it short so that we can cover a lot, and that'll give you more time to do your biome project. Okay. So we're actually almost done with chapter 13. So. Um, what did it, what did we talk about today? Who would like to summarize? What did we talk about in chapter 13 today? Who can summarize for me? I can try summarizing. All right, go ahead. Um, we talked about the relationships between like, well, we talked, we talked about the like scale of like, um, well, interaction and like the size of things. So like, it goes from like one organism to like the oh, entire. Yeah, yeah. you mean you mean this thing, right? Yeah. Okay. Good. Vanessa, what else? Then we talked about like the interactions between um, different kinds of like types of organisms, and like the categories in which they like off of something or like create food themselves mm -hmm. and the, do you remember the names of those things those groups um i remember a couple of them so we call those the producers and the consumers right you're talking about uh you're talking about this slide right the producers and the consumers right Vanessa? yes okay and what else did we talk about guys That's basically it, right? So that, 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 was it. that was it. So chapter 13, as you can see, isn't, isn't like really a deep chapter. It's, it's really just surface level stuff. And that's the point, like I told you. 13 is really just getting a foundation for the types of things we're going to look at later. And all of these words that I talked about, so your, your producers, your consumers, your, um, your populations, your community, all of this is going to be like the background knowledge you're going to need to know to make your project. So when you give me your biome, for example, be it like an animation or even a sketch, because again, I know we're not at school and I know not everyone has little toys of coral reefs or lions lying around. So we'll figure out how we can make this. But, but when you decide which biome you're gonna create, you're gonna have to tell me, this is my producer, this is my consumer, this one's an herbivore, this one's a carnivore. Does, is it starting to make a little more sense now, guys? Yeah, they make sense like everything around it. Like, oh, yeah. this would be exactly. Yeah. exactly. This would be like a tree. Exactly, yeah. right? So if you choose if you choose a tropical rainforest, Felipe, you're going to tell me that thing right there, that's my detritivore. That thing right there, that's an abiotic factor because blah, 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 blah. You see Are you going to have us a list to like, show what to have in the project? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. I, right. need to, I need to type the project. Right. Right. I, I don't right. really have it, but I have an idea. Let me show you guys something, okay? So let me go back to the website with the biomes just to give you an idea of, of the project, right? So let me show you the website for biome, right? So I, I attached this website to your website folder. And go ahead. Someone, someone, pick one of these biomes. Someone, pick one. These are the biomes. Pick one. Which one do you want to look at? Anyone, guys? Pick. Ice caps. Okay, so let's look at the ice caps, right? 
So on an ice cap biome, so I've got a little bit of a lag. All right, so from this website, you'll learn about your biome. And it also tells you a little bit about the climate itself, right? It tells you about the temperatures. It tells you um, a little bit of, it has some little video about the types of animals that are there. So you're gonna do a little bit of research to find out like what makes up your biome, right? And a lot of it is covered in the book as well. So you're gonna use the video, you're gonna use this website, and really your own creativity. Because once you know, for example, okay, well in this picture, let's look at this picture together. What would be the abiotic factors in this picture, guys, of, of this? Oh, I think this is a video actually, let me play some of it. Let's watch this together, okay, and we'll end here. Okay, so it looks like we're in Antarctica. So in this picture, guys, what would the abiotic factors be so far in this video? The mountains. Okay, what else? The ice. The ice, what else? The, the water. The water, what else? The temperature. The temperature, right? So remember, let me go back to the PowerPoint going back to the the levels that um vanessa was talking about in the levels in those levels if you're if you're doing a can you guys see my powerpoint now yeah okay so if you choose the polar ice caps rather than this desert a biome is made up of an ecosystem an ecosystem is made up of a community a community is made up of a population. A population is made up of organisms. So you can't just say, I'm doing ice caps and I'm done. It's cold, there's ice, boom. No, you have to tell me what makes up the ecosystem. You have to tell me who are the members of the community. You have to tell me what different populations you have. And then you're gonna tell me, you know, obviously what's one example of an organism that belongs to that population. So once we get through all the chapters, you're gonna choose just one biome. And again, there's many, many to choose from, right? So if you do ice caps, obviously there's not a lot of animals that live in the Arctic or the Antarctic. So you'll have less animals to work with, okay? But it doesn't matter which biome you choose. If you do desert, if you do ice caps, you're all still gonna do the same thing, which is study about what are the organisms, populations, communities, ecosystems that make up your particular biome. Do you guys see what I'm saying now? Are you, are you getting a feel for it? Yes. All right, cool. So we'll end there, guys, because I know I've said a lot. And just start, if you guys want to get a head start, why don't you guys go to that website? Check it out. I linked it to your Schoology page. I linked it. Let me show you where it's at. It's right... I haven't attached it to the uh, folders yet because I haven't made the assessment, the summative, but I will, okay? But for now, if you go to your pink folder and you click on websites, it's the last one. I just added it yesterday. It's right here, okay? So why don't you guys just go ahead and start looking at the biomes, think about which one sounds cool to you, which one you would like to construct. And again, um, I'm cool with drawings. If, if you guys have little toys lying around that represent the you know the animals of your biome even better but i know the times we live in guys and i know i have a lot of artists here too that love sketching anyway and you could even make it as a powerpoint or a prezi right alexa you made a prezi you could you could totally do a biome on a prezi presentation okay so so please we can do this okay any other questions before i wrap up y'all are you going to include food chains Yes. So, Melissa, when, when we get to, actually, food chains was the next thing I'm going to talk about. So, it's not just going to be knowing what's the animal or what's the ice cap of your biome. It's going to be what is the network of energy that cycles within that biome. So, absolutely. So, if we're looking at those penguins, we're going to have to then know who eats the penguins, what feeds the penguins, what competes against those penguins because that's what food chains are. Does that make sense? Yes. All right. All right, guys. Have a nice, safe weekend. Um, please don't let the news scare you. Hopefully stuff doesn't get bad over here. And I'm glad you guys are safe at home. And as always, feel free to message me. Um, check in with me, okay?
Alright. Alright guys. Have a good weekend. See you Monday. Peace out. Bye. 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 Bye.